Okay, now that we've kind of familiarized ourselves with the image hose, I want to kind of recap and um, kind of show you what some of the other brushes that uh, Corel already has. Um, like I kind of mentioned before, I'm not a, I'm not a huge fan of these brushes. Uh, we've got uh, we've got little leaves in there, little flowers. And then with this one, little buds, uh, this one, which is a uh, little, you know, whatever, traffic signs and, and traffic lights and whatnot. And at first, maybe you can, you know, put it really small and then you can gradually make them bigger. And obviously you can do these on different layers, so these things. And you've got concrete. This is on there. Yes, lots of little houses. And little skydiver and we have a grass one have little poppies more flowers some kind of concrete thing and palm trees and more flowers and then they've got a couple birds which uh, I think are kind of nice once you kind of go through them, uh, I think the initial instinct is like, oh my god, this is incredible. But what, what I find you know, even more incredible is the, uh, the possibility of uh, making your own, uh, which I'd like to talk about next. Okay, now I'd like to show you some of the image hose brushes that I've created. Um, first of all, just you know, make sure you're still on the image hose. Uh, no other brush will work for the uh, those images. Um, go to the uh, image hose brush menu, which is in the little selector thing here, bottom right hand corner, and then click on that little arrow, uh, load nozzle, and then find where you saved these. And in my case, they're on the desktop in a little folder that I've created. I have a bad skin brush. And a lot of these I did for my, uh, my zombies that I created. And these are some of the early ones where I really wasn't sure what I was doing. This is a meat one. And I just use this to, you know, render little scars and, you know, blemishes on my, uh... And, uh this is the uh, bird brush that I showed you earlier. Uh, for my robot birds. I made a uh, crack mud one. And these are the ones that are really easy to make and, and very handy. Uh, the texture ones I find to be really nice and you can kind of see when you look at them individually um, there's a lot of repetition going on but because of the fractile nature of it they tend to mesh really well and I also kind of fuzzied up the edge quite a bit so they, they also mesh really well too you know taking the eraser down on the opacity level of it and it's kind of go around the edge so they don't get that sharp edge look um, so it doesn't look uh, so much like a collage and they kind of weave together quite nicely. I also made an intestine brush. Yay. And this one obviously needs to be cleaned up quite a bit. There's still a lot of, uh, kind of, well, I hate to say gross stuff, but gross stuff around here. Of course this isn't gross at all. And I made a muscle brush, and most of these are for the, uh, the zombies that I created. Just to kind of paint some weird, you know, strips of bloody flesh on my zombies. And then a uh, varicose vein brush, which I didn't do the greatest job of. Um, there's a couple of the images that just get repeated way too often, but it's nice for, you know, unsightly uh, varicose veins on my zombies or whatever you'd want it to be. And with something like this, I would, uh, I would generally paint them on uh, very lightly to begin with. And just to show you what I kind of intended, I'm going to go here and go to one of the linear ones. Well, they're all kind of all straight up here. I'll go down on the brush size significantly. A little bit too small. So you can have a whole crowd in the background and then you can gradually size it up a little bit. So that's lots of fun. And then eventually you can you know, make them larger if you want to. Almost looks like an animation when you're doing it. And this was uh, 
piece in progress. Um, this is the image that I was working on with the uh, with the zombie brush, and this is the area that I think it works out really well for. Is this area in the background, just kind of you know portraying you know mass confusion, tons and tons and tons of zombies in the background. And yes, I did actually pose for uh, half of these zombies. Half of them are me, and then half of them are my my brother here. And you can see all of these are just uh, individual layers, obviously, you know, lots of layers. And then the ones in the background, I just kind of uh, fuzzied up a little bit, you know, took the blur tool or whatever and blurry them up a little bit. But you can see this still looks very cut and paste, which is why I, you know, obviously I'm going to paint over it. And I do that with the uh, quick clone, which I'll talk about later on. And this is the uh, final painting that I did uh, with the uh, bird brush. Uh, and I'm not too thrilled with it. I actually want to do it over again. Um, as you can see, I did uh, almost all the birds. In fact, all the birds uh, that I made the bird brush out of with, uh, with one bird. Um, so it looks kind of boring and repetitive in the background. And you can kind of see close up. Yes, they're all, all the same bird. Which is why I'm... Um, Currently working on a whole bunch of feather birds, and you can kind of see I have them all in a layer here. That's how you have to make the bird brush. I have lots and lots of uh, different kinds of birds that I've created. Well, zombie birds, or not zombie birds, sorry, robot birds. And just as a review, I can go ahead and show you how you create a image of this brush one final time. Uh, once you have them all in a group, they have to be in a group. You come over here to the image shows menu, go out to the uh, flyout menu, uh, make nozzle from group, and I'll show you this. And yes, it does look a little weird. It certainly won't look like that. And then you just go ahead and save it. Um, you can't save it to the library here, but I've ran into way too many problems doing that. So I just usually save it elsewhere. And in this case, I'm uh, saving it on the desktop. And I'll just call it uh, B brush. And it looks like I forgot to uh, erase that, or maybe I did, I'm not really sure. Yeah, this little image here is very misleading because none of this garbage here usually shows up whatsoever. I don't really know why it kind of records it like that. And I'm going to open up a new canvas and kind of show you what I just created. Uh, you have to go back here, uh, load brush, and should be on my desktop. B brush, open. And just make sure you have the image hose brush on, not the other brushes. And make sure my brush is actually on. And then we can uh, paint away. And eventually I'll have them all kind of going in the, uh, in the same direction. So that's the image hose brush for you.